but it also attracts people who make and sell instruments. And the ones that we associate most with traditional music are the fiddle, the bowron, the tin whistle and the harp. Now the Irish harp is very much in demand, but there's actually only a handful of harp makers left in this country. Anne recently visited one such craftsman. His name is Brian Callan and he's just outside Crockwell in County Galway. Where is Ringman? Where is Ringman? Here I am, here I am. How are you today, sir? Farewell. Music is everywhere in the home of Brian Callan and Adele Coughlin. It didn't start out that way, however, having run his own furniture business and worked as a woodwork teacher and a spell as a stay-at-home dad, it was 2011 before Brian made his first harp. I've come to meet Brian to hear how he began making harps, his first, a birthday present for Adele. Well, about five years ago, my wife Adele came in from work and she said, I'd love to have a harp for her classes because Adele is a music teacher and she runs her own music school and she uses the could I approach for teaching. And she's and part of that um, approach is where she teaches children folk songs of her native country. So I went online and couldn't find any small Irish made harps. Oh, I was shocked. I thought, well, the harp is our national emblem. It's our national instrument. I was sure that you could walk into any music shop or go on the internet and find at least a harp maker in every country. Um, but that wasn't, that wasn't the case. And so, Brian built a small Celtic harp which the children loved. And it literally just took off from there. Adele got her birthday present and she brought it to her class and the kids loved it. Big, 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 big hit. I don't know, but the harp is a therapeutic instrument. It has been used in music therapy all over the world for years. So that's nothing new. Um, but I also think it's just immediate gratification. You strum a harp, you get a lovely sound. It's also a lovely thing to hold. So they have no problem managing it. They seem to have great focus in the class. When we were in the singing group, they'd be getting distracted. Um, but as soon as we started to a proper harp class, they sat down, they focused sometimes up to 40 minutes long. And also their diction is clearer when they sing. Brian takes special pride in the fact that 99% of the timber he uses for his harp making is sourced locally. A good friend of mine, Martin Lodge, who's always on the lookout for for trees and for, for, for wind-blown trees, um, he has his own sorrow miser, so if he doesn't source it for me, I will get phone calls from estates locally, uh, from three or four kilometres up the road, and they'll say, we have a tree down, would you be interested in it? So I'll go and have a look and see if it's if it's not too badly damaged. Absolutely, I'll take it away. Um, but it's all it's all County Galway, you know. Drying out the planks of wood can take over a year, after which it's ready to work with. Well, what I like to call it is kind of from from plank to pluck, you know, where you you you, you take the plank into the workshop, mark out your uh, your templates. Get everything glued up. Um, everything has to be drilled precisely for the for the for the tune pegs and placements for the strings. I use the stave method, where I glue or laminate ten pieces of timber to form the cone of the harp, which which forms the the, the round back, um, and each piece is, is is glued separately to form that shape. Um, the good thing about using the stave method, you can mix different timbers and that's why I kind of chose that so you can you can use it in different timbers to create different tones um, in the sandbox. The sandbox would be the most important thing to, to get right because that's that's what the sound that's what the voice of the harp is. This time of year is critical in the traditional music calendar and Brian attends the FLA each year to promote his harps. Brian, how important is the FLA for your business? 
The flat is very important for me to sh to showcase my harps. It's it's where people come to to try your harps. Do you know, like you do get people coming to your house and that, but people generally go to the flat because they're involved, they're playing, or they've entered competitions in in the flat. So they come and they're there to either buy or they're there to to look and see what's available to them. So you get orders at the flat. Oh, absolutely, yeah, especially our island flat because. That, that's key for, for parents. That might be an incentive where they bring the child and if they get into the competition or if they, they do well in the competition, a reward for them may be um, uh, an investment of a professional harp. Brian, you must get a great feeling to produce such a beautiful instrument after such long hours of work. Ah, yeah, it's great satisfaction, you know, from, from starting out with your plank bringing it in, shaping it and cutting it, and finally finishing away, putting the strings on and all the hardware, absolutely. And then what makes it what makes it more special for me is to, to hear it being played, you know, that's, that's the best feeling of all. for Brian Callan. He's going to be here in Sligo over the weekend selling those harps that he makes in Galway. Well now, one thing is for sure, that the flash